بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس آئی ایم ڈاکٹر سہیل احمد آئی ایم پروفیسر اینڈ ایچ او ڈی آف دا ڈپارٹمنٹ آف سائیکیٹری اینڈ بیہیویئر سائنسز ایف آر پی ایم سی آئی ایم گوئنگ ٹو ٹیک دس سیشن وچ از ریلیٹڈ ٹو دا بیہیویئر سائنسز ٹاپکس آف دس موڈیول ٹوڈے دا سیشن وچ آئی ایم ٹیکنگ از ریلیٹڈ ٹو Uh, the memory the learning objectives of this uh, session related to uh, memory are that at the end of this session the participants or audience should be able to describe the concept of memory describe the processes of memory discuss the stages of memory formation describe the kinds of memory to be able to mention the brain structures related to memory formation and functioning uh, to be able to discuss the causes of amnesia that is loss of memory and its clinical application uh, discuss the assessment of memory problems and to discuss the measures uh, to improve the memory well to start with I will put a famous quote of Oscar Wilde, the Irish poet of 19th century, which we all know. He said, memory is the diary that we all carry about with us. And it is, of course, correct that it is the collection of events in the form of a diary and the events which we experience, yeah, which we had experience in our life well I would like to give you the concept of memory the memory in fact is the ability of the mind of an individual to retain the learned information and knowledge of past events and experiences and to retrieve it now i would like you to think about the statements uh, which are given in this slide is memory a gift of nature of course it is a gift of nature the value of memory uh, can be best described by the person who develops a memory problem when you are not able to recall an event the name of a, a familiar person or any other event of the past you get uh, uh, irritable frustrated and it affects your life so memory is a gift of nature it helps you to move forwards uh, in your life is memory a torture or a joy it all depend uh, it, it all depends upon the events Uh, or the memory which you are trying to recall or uh, you are getting in your mind it becomes a torture when you try to recall a painful event witnessing some horrible accident or mm, uh, recalling some some sad events happened to us or to people around us is it is really a torture and one tries to forget and does not want to recall on the other hand the joyful movements pleasant uh, uh, movements and events are uh, uh, one can easily enjoy recalling uh, these kind of events or movements celebrating your birthday in the past getting the result of your exams with the with uh, success are the examples of the memory we all enjoy well memory problems uh, are one of the common complaints which we usually see in our clinical practice and but what about you uh, do you sometimes find difficult to recall the name of a person seen before or fail to recollect the details of an event happened earlier i think sometimes it happens 
but there are certain reasons for that and uh, can I ask you that if, uh, would you be able to remember and later on recall the details of this lecture or any other lecture which you take uh, in, in your uh, uh, teaching uh, I think it's not possible to remember all the details Well, uh, just f uh, for the sake of brainstorming, I would like to give you this case scenario so that uh, you can uh, identify the possible cause in this uh, patient of the loss of memory. Well, this is a case uh, uh, in which uh, the attendant of an 80-year-old female notices forgetfulness in her which has progressively increased in last few years. She finds difficulty in identifying the family members name their faces and at times fails to recall that she has taken the meals and forgets the events happened few hours or few days back. However, she can recall her life events occurred in the remote, remote past and describe and give all the details about those events. Well, uh, what is the possible cause in your mind. I think we s come across uh, such cases in our practice uh, and, and not only in practice but the people around us in our homes. So I think m many of you uh, would uh, be able to give the correct answer. We will discuss this later on. Well, the likely cause of the memory issues in the case scenario mentioned in the previous slide was of course uh, uh, it was a case of dementia and more likely the Alzheimer's disease. But what about the young people as memory problems in old age is an expected phenomena but have you seen young people complaining of forgetfulness? You must have seen especially the memory problems in those persons who are very busy and are doing the multitasking or are not able to, uh, to, to concentrate on the events uh, uh, happening around them. Well, now we will talk about the stages of memory formation. It is important to understand that human memory works like a computer. As in the computer, we put some data, we, we write some uh, you know, text, and this data is then stored in the computer uh, in the name of a file in the place where we, we want to store it, the drive, and later on when we need that uh, data, we uh, recall it or retrieve, retrieve it when we go to that particular site and, and click it, the data is in front of you. The same happens in the human memory formation. The first stage is of course the encoding. It is the process by which perceptual and sensory information, whatever information you are getting by your senses from the environment around you, is uh, transformed to enter in the memory system in particular areas of the brain. And that information is then stored. This is the second stage of memory formation. It is the stage in which the we retain the information which was entered in our brain and that information is retained to use it later in the time of need. And of course third stage is the recall or retrieval. That is the process by which we recover the information which was stored and become consciously aware of it. Well, uh, this process of uh, formation of memory is again mentioned in this slide uh, briefly. The three stages are mentioned here. Encoding means the modifying information uh, which we get so that it can be placed in the memory in particular site in the brain. The storage is the maintenance of that information, the retained information over the time and the retrieval is the 
location getting the location of stored informa information and uh, its return to the consciousness so this is the process of uh, memory formation briefly described in this slide as well after getting an idea of the processes of memory now we we would talk about the stages of memory formation so there are three stages you can also say the three types but uh, it is better we call it stages because one stage leads to another and these uh, uh, stages are number one the sensory memory number two the short term memory or STM and number three the long term memory or LTM well the first stage is of course the sensory memory this type or stage of memory first encountered by stimulus and briefly holds impression of it the sensory memory has a large capacity but very sh of but is of very short duration the information uh, which we uh, enter into the sensory memory it lasts not more than uh, two seconds and sensory memory traces fade fairly rapidly well i can give you an example to uh, to have a uh, uh, better concept of this kind of memory this uh, type of uh, memory when we uh, go outside and walk uh, on the road or travel on the road we do see a lot of things happening around us we do see the people around us walking traveling we we see the boards the sign boards of the advertisements and we also see the events which are happening around us so all these information about the signboards the people the events happening they all entered into our sensory memory and it has got a very uh, large capacity and all kind of information enter into it but it lasts for only few seconds and if we do not pay attention to this uh, to do this uh, uh, the information which we see around in the sensory memory it fades away so it has got a large capacity but uh, it lasts uh, um, uh, briefly for few seconds and to retain it we need to concentrate as i mentioned you while talking about in the uh, previous slide that if attention is not given to this information it decays and we forget the stimulus uh, which uh, entered into our sensory memory but if we attend to that information and rehearse it repeat it try to give uh, attention and concentration on, on this information it is transferred to the short term memory but many so called pro uh, problems of memory especially in the young busy people are th uh, these the attention failures we are not able to give proper attention or concentration to the events which entered into the sensory memory properly and it does uh, so that information does not transfer uh, uh, get transferred into the short term memory and fades away and we are not able to recall those events if we do not pay attention to it the second stage of memory formation is the short term memory formation if we pay attention to the sensory information uh, the sensory memory much of it is transferred to short term memory that is if we pay it attention we concentrate on it that particular event which entered into our mind is now uh, converted into the short term memory uh the short term uh, memory is also called the working memory one way of holding on to the information is called maintenance rehearsal this is mentally or verbally repeating the information to keep it on your short term memory if we try to repeat the information in our mind or verbally a number of times then it is possible it is likely that that information is then transformed into the short term memory 
as I mentioned it is also called the working memory information in the short-term memory may decay or be, or be displaced if it is not transferred to long-term memory by rehearsal which is the third stage of the memory formation the long-term memory so we do a lot of things in our daily life by using our short-term memory and that's why it is also called the working memory okay recalling the phone number the cell number of a friend which uh, he uh, uh, told you few minutes back few hours back and you try to uh, to repeat in your mind and now uh, you are able to recall it it is a type of short-term memory well the third stage of the memory formation is the long-term memory or LTM this is the type of stage of memory capable of relatively permanent storage the events the information which enter into the long-term memory are likely to be retained for a longer period of time well the sensory memory had a large capacity but it used to hold the information for only few seconds but in the case of long-term memory it is infinite in the capacity as well as for the duration as you saw in the case scenario which we discussed uh, a few slides earlier the old lady 8 year old lady uh, who had uh, probably the dementia of Alzheimer's type she was able to recall the events happened to her in the a remote past when she was young so the long-term memory was relatively intact and she was able to recall but the working memory or short-term memory in this case in, uh, in such cases is lost so the patient is not able to recall the day to day to day information or which which uh, which he we uh, which he experienced in the uh, in the recent past information in long-term memory is stored on the basis of meaning and importance and not by sound or image this is important to, uh, to understand that in the long-term memory the information is stored uh, by it on the basis of its meaning the concepts the importance the the importance of, of the events which happened to you in your childhood in your uh, 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 few years back the mm, the moments of joy the moments of sorrow which had an important meaning attached to you uh, are stored uh, in the form of the long-term memory and sometimes you are able to recall it uh, clearly clearly uh, the events which happened to you in your uh, at your uh, earlier age or the childhood period information in the short-term memory can be transferred to long-term memory by two processes which are called maintenance rehearsal or elaborative rehearsal maintenance rehearsal is the mental repetition of information in order to keep it in the memory while the elaborative rehearsal is the method for increasing the retention of new information by relating it to the information that is already known so the maintenance rehearsal is the repetition of information in order to keep it in memory sometimes you try try to memorize the things repeat it again and again and again in the mind so that it becomes a part of the long-term memory and sometimes you do not repeat it but uh, uh, you relate it or link it to the information that was already known for example the cause of illnesses you know you try to remember and actually re you remember the five causes of an illness when you l uh, uh, study but recently a new cause has been identified by the research so when you relate or add this new cause to the old causes then the list may become from five to six so that is the elaborative rehearsal in which you relate this new information with the past information which you have learned. The forgetting in the long-term memory occurs through the retrieval failure. 
well again this stages of memory formation are mentioned in the graphic form in this particular slide as you see the sensory input which uh, is related to the events or information around us it uh, uh, enters first into the sensory memory and uh, where the unattended information is quickly lost and when you give attention to any uh, particular e information it uh, uh, it enters and becomes a part of the short term memory or working memory and the unrehearsed information uh, here from the short term memory is quickly lost but the rehearsed information enters into the long term uh, memory by the process of coding uh, uh, encoding and s as, uh, when you try to retrieve it, it uh, you are able to consciously uh, recall it Well, this slide uh, mentions, uh, give you an idea of kinds of memories. That is, when we talk about the memory, it means here the long term memory. So, there are two main kinds of memories one is the retrospective memory, other is the prospective memory. Prospective memory is, in fact, not a memory uh, of the past events, it is uh, when you remember to do things in the future. We used to do it uh, by making a to do list. Uh, today but now it is uh, very easy to get uh, uh, an idea of uh, uh, recall of what you want to do in the future by putting and uh, the reminders on your mobile phone so it is uh, the, the prospective memory is now uh, managed by in fact your mobile phones your computers when you put the reminders on that uh, on the other hand, the, the, the retrospective memory, that is the memory for the past events, it is uh, uh, in fact uh, of, uh, of two types, the explicit memory and the implicit memory. Explicit memory is the memory of the events uh, uh, related to the specific information it is again of two types the episodic memory and the semantic memory and the difference is that that the episode uh, uh, the episodic memory is the memory of the things or events that happened to us what we ate uh, in the morning uh, home we met uh, yesterday what we did uh, about two days back all this the 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 account of the events uh, which happened to us this is called the episodic memory while in the semantic memory is related to the uh, events uh, which happened around us not specifically happened to us for example a uh, mm, uh, result of a match cricket match which was played between two teams yesterday some other events happened and the, the mm, disaster uh, uh, caused by uh, the COVID-19 the, the figures of the patients who were infected uh, the disaster by the floods due to the rains all these uh, events which happened uh, around us but not necessarily we are uh, related or a part of that event so this is the general knowledge in fact and this is the events of the general knowledge uh, are called the semantic memory and the implicit memory is uh, the memory of the skills memory of how to perform a task uh, we will uh, again talk about uh, uh, um, talk about these two types in the next slide well the explicit memory is also called the declarative memory and it involves the memory that you can consciously recall put into words put into pictures etc there are various types of explicit uh, or declarative memory as i mentioned in the previous slide that is one is the episodic memory this is your long-term memory for the events or episodes in your life for example your last birthday party where you went for summer vacation what you did last year uh, in that uh, on that particular date or day and the semantic memories are the memories of the general knowledge facts dates concepts idea that aren't tied to a specific episode in fact that are ha that are happening around you 
the the events the memory about those events is called the semantic memory the implicit memory are in fact a non declarative or procedural memories you can also call it an as an skill it involves the memory but you are not conscious of it memory with no conscious recall or conscious access to what you are recalling is called the implicit memory and it involves the motor skills the action basic procedures you know and perform for example i can give two examples the driving swimming cycling when you start driving and you uh, sit on the seat the driving seat you usually do not recall what you need to do to put the ignition on to put the uh, the gear and to uh, to to exert pressure on on the accelerator because y you are so much used to of doing all these things that you automatically starts doing it sometimes you are also talking to other person and doing this the same happens to the cycling or swimming you do not try to recall what you need to do when you start cycling or or swimming so these are a uh, more of a uh, of the skills of the of the procedures or the procedures we, we which we are used to do these are called the implicit memory that how to do a particular well i would uh, just like to mention the brain structures which are involved in the formation and the retention of memory of course you would be able to study in detail when you will go through the neuroanatomy and the neurophysiology but just to mention here that memory does not reside at a single part in the brain or in a single structure of the brain in fact various parts of the brain are involved a very important area is called the hippocampus which is involved in the formation of new memories or transfer of the information from short term memory to long term memory the parts of the memories are stored in sensory sensory cortex in fact uh, the visual impression auditory impression the stimuli are first uh, uh, first identified in the sensory cortex and later on converted this uh, this uh, sensory type of memory into the short term memory the sights are stored in the visual cortex and sounds in the auditory cortex the other important areas of the brain which are related to the formation and retention of memory are the amygdala mammillary bodies uh, thalamus hypothalamus and prefrontal cortex now we'll talk about the forgetting processes the forgetfulness uh, two processes are involved in the pos uh, in the uh, in forgetting Uh, or losing the memory first is the decay and second is the interference decay is in fact the memory uh, the fading of memory with the time automatically when uh, you uh, the memory is stored in your brain but you are not uh, uh, you know you do not need to recall it you are not uh, trying to recall it it uh, gets faded uh, with the time and finally one after many many years or uh, a considerable long period of time you try to recall it you don't get that information into your conscious recall so this is called the decay process and second process of the forgetting is called interference uh, it is the concept which is described as the um, process in which the information displaces information and there are two again do, uh, there are two kind of uh, the uh, the interference the retroactive retroactive interference and proactive interference the retroactive interference means the new information which is entering into your mind or your memory system it interferes with the previously learned information when the new information enters then the old information which is not being recalled again and again it gets uh, uh, out of your uh, uh, memory process of your recall and the proactive inf interference is the opposite of that that is old information entering with the new information sometimes the old in old inf information is more important more valuable more important to you 
and you do not want to forget it you recall that information again and again and when the new information enters into uh, your system memory system the old information does not allow it to be part of the memory it all depends on, uh, upon the kind uh, the, the the events the content of the memory which you are having sometimes the new information is very important and at it, it displaces the old information sometimes the old information is important and is strong and it displaces or interferes the new information well just to mention the few uh, memory issues uh, which we come across which we see in our the routine uh, uh, routine life so as i mentioned probably in some earlier slide that the forgetfulness is commonly seen in a person who is very busy sometimes we are very much occupied by our uh, job stress uh, our uh, 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 load of work uh, and and we we are, are required to do uh, sometimes more than one task at a time so we are not able to concentrate or give attention to one particular event yeah, or to the, the the work we are doing so sometimes it is not possible for us to recall which happened uh, to us in to that period and it is just because of our commitments and our preoccupation with so many tasks and we are not able to pay the attention or concentration and forget this is a normal thing this is not an abnormal thing sometimes to to uh, deal with uh, these issues as i mentioned uh, in the in, in some previous slide that we used to uh, the the uh, to make the to do list in the past but now the reminders given in the mobile phone reminds us to do the things uh, on a particular day or particular time and uh, mm, uh, we do get a lot of help by using these th this kind of uh, you know reminders and very important area for all of us especially for you at this stage is how to memorize memorize or to, s to make your memory strong for the purpose of appearing in the examinations examinations um, of course in the examination you require to reproduce what you uh, you have learned and and uh, mm, that is uh, sometimes uh, a difficult task for all of us sometimes we do forget uh, so many things at the time of examination we'll see in the later slide how we can deal with this situation what exactly is the problem well talking about the clinical uh, uh, practice in our clinical practice uh, as a physician we do see sometimes the patients coming with the memory problems as uh, i mentioned uh, in the first few slides uh, I gave you the case scenario that of, of an old lady which is uh, uh, these days we are getting a lot of such patients and these are primarily the patients uh, of uh, amnesia the memory for uh, loss in old age and uh, many of these cases are due uh, to the uh, loss of memory because of the process which is called uh, dementia and one of the type of the dementia as you must have heard is the alzheimer's disease in which uh, progressively as the age uh, advances especially in the old age in 70s 80s or um, uh, 90s um, the brain gets uh, degenerated slowly and progressively and the first symptom uh, of that uh, illness or the degeneration is the memory disturbances uh, sometimes uh, there are damage to the areas of the brain which I mentioned in the pre uh, some some previous slide which are related with the formation intention of memory like like hippocampus it may be the traumatic uh, event it may be due to drugs uh, it may be due to the alcohol it may be due to toxins some infections that the damage to these areas in the brain is also uh, it, it presents with uh, initially with the loss of memory or disturbance of memory well in certain psychological states especially as i men uh, uh, it, uh, as mentioned in the slide that depression which is a mood disorder and anxiety disorders uh, which uh, affect the concentration uh, and attention of a person 
and subsequently the learning and then the finally the memory gets impaired an anxious person is not able to 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 uh, retain the information because he's preoccupied with some other stresses so the information he is getting in the form of sensory memory is not transformed into uh, the short term and the long term memory again the mood disturbance in the form of depression the person is not motivated enough to pay concentration or attention or to retain the knowledge so these states can give rise to the memory problem which of course get better as these states or illnesses are treated sometimes fatigue and lack uh, and uh, and lack of sleep also the exhaustion also gives rise to the state in which uh, in which you are not able to retain the information uh, and uh, are not able to recall what you have learned so this is again a common complaint common scenario in which we get the amnesia problems well uh, coming back to uh, how to improve uh, our memory while uh, uh, studying as you all know you are students and at this stage everybody is required uh, is required to recall uh, the learned uh, information which we get in our study period at the time of examination so it is uh, not easy sometimes for, for some students to recall correctly and uh, timely when they are giving their exams Uh, one uh, very obsolete method is uh, to remember the things is the rote rehearsal which we call it the ratta lagana so this is uh, not a good method we should not try to apply or use this the rote rehearsal method because uh, once you forget one word out of the material or the text you have uh, trying to uh learn by rote rehearsal you forget all the passage all the contents so this is not a good method of putting things into our long term memory but instead the apl- applying attention and avoiding distractions we should try to memorize what we uh, learn uh by two methods either the meaningfulness or the association the best way of retaining or uh, memorizing the information which we learn is to remember if the things have got meaning for us we are trying to understand the digestive system we should try to understand to apply that information to ourselves and try to understand it uh the ad- another method of improving the memory is the association the associate items to be learned with familiar items that are already known or uh, are vivid uh, images so giving the meaningful the meaning to the to the to the content which we read it helps you to memorize helps you to retain in your memory system which we are uh, which uh, you can rec- recall and retrieve at the time of need and also when you associate associate the new information with the past information you are uh, in a better position to retain uh, that 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 information and recall it so these are the the best methods to uh, to to improve our uh, memory system sometimes the memory can be improved by using the mnemonic devices that is the remembering a, a process in which the items are related to be easily recall sets of symbols such as phrases or jingles i'll give an example in the next slide one of the example of the uh, of the mnemonic device is a uh, re, uh, storing or the mm, retaining uh, into the in our memory the name of the planets that is the mercury venus earth mars jupiter saturn uh, uranus and neptune and pluto by mm, a very famous uh, line that is my very eager mother just served us nine potatoes and the m of my It stands for mercury v for venus e for uh, earth uh, uh, m of the mother for mass uh, j for justice jupiter s for served is uh, saturn uh, uh, u for us is uranus and 
n uh, of 9 is uh, Neptune and p of potatoes is Plotos. This is one way of remembering you can make your own uh, some some kind of mnemonic uh, phrase to remember uh, some important the other famous example is how to remember the colors of the rainbow Fibgeir Fibgeir is uh, V for violet, I for indigo, B for blue, G for green, Y for yellow, O for orange, R for red so sometimes uh, these, these kind of phrases, these kinds of mnemonic uh, methods uh, are helpful to to memorize uh, certain information in the last two slides we will try to give an account of how to assess the memory problems in uh, clinically in the patients so there is a useful uh, method of doing uh, this uh, uh, mental state examination uh, in the required patients which is called mini mental state examination MMSE it based, based on certain questions uh, and the answers of the those questions help us to identify how much the mental state is functioning so it has got nine items MMSC and one of them is the memory other is the orientation attention verbal fluency nominal aphasia receptive aphasia alexia agraphia and constitutional apraxia uh, which you will be able to learn uh, later on when you go into the detail of the neuroanatomy and neuro neurophysiology so one of the component of the MMSC examination is uh, the assessment of mem the memory questions uh, memory related questions of many men mental state examination are when we ask the patient what is the year this year what is the season what is the date today the day of the week and the month uh, the examiner names three unrelated objects clearly and slowly and then ask the patient to name all three of them the patient's responses is used for scoring the examiner repeats them until patient learns all of them if possible and after a few minutes ask the patient to recall those three objects shown to him before for example three things one pencil one mobile phone uh, and one, uh, one uh, book or uh, a writing pad and he, he, the examiner uh, after a few minutes uh, uh, ask the patient uh, can you just recall uh, what three items which I have, I have showed you and there are of course uh, the responses are, are, are recorded in the form of a scoring and then we are, are able to uh, tell and assess that uh, the w to what extent the patient has got this memory loss uh, well I hope uh, you, uh, you have uh, uh, understood and um, the uh, content of this lecture in which I try to give you the memory, the concept of memory, the stages of memory, the kind of memory, uh, the um, uh, process of memory and uh, the clinical application of memory problems and how we can improve our memory and how we can assess the memory problems. Uh, well, uh, if you can, uh, um, if you would like to have uh, uh, a certain queries about it, uh, you can uh, uh, ask uh, me on my email address uh, uh, which is uh, uh, soha59 at yahoo.com I again repeat it soha59 at yahoo.com so thank you very much for listening and uh, if you have got any query as I told you, you can ask me. Thank you very much.